fish, folks. Feels good anyway, I'll tell you. They're up on this this point here. Oh, that's a good fish. Check this out, folks. Winter fishing doesn't get much better than this. Thanks for watching today. We're gonna to put some big slabs in the boat. I'm gonna walk you through live scope, side imaging. I'm gonna show you, we're gonna let them go today. Um, I'm gonna to show you what I'm using today. Everything that you need to know about winter fishing, <laughs> you're gonna to get to find out. Let's start right now, okay? Let's keep you in enthralled. Let's keep you interested in the video. Um, Cause right now I'm using a, a uh, curly fry from Jinko Fishing right there in that bluegrass color. I'm using that white slasher head with a blade on it. Now, I'll tell you what, um, it's doing the job without a doubt this year. And I also like that six pound high vis line because a lot of times there's slack in the line and sometimes you can detect a bike just by watching that line as you're reeling it in. You'll see a jump, boom, set the hook. So good stuff. I'll tell you what folks, also I wanna let you know that um, you know Grizzly Jig is gonna have their show coming up here at the end of January. Check them out. Three Pound Fishing is going to be there. Myself, Wade, Marcus, we're all going to be there. And it's going to be a great time. Visit us at the Ozark Rod booth. Um, woo! Let's put some slaps in the boat. Thanks for joining. I appreciate it. Get ready for a fantastic episode from Three Pound Fishing. Thanks to these great sponsors. Now, a lot of people are going to wonder why I don't throw a buoy all the time. But right now, I feel like these fish are... They're not necessarily shallow and they're not really schooled up to a point where I, I just don't need to throw a buoy right now. Let's just put it that way. No long winded answer. Don't need to throw a buoy right now. Don't want to. I'm not marking a pile and um, I'm just, I'm just spreading the cast around trying to figure out where those fish are at. So let's do it. First cast, that is like, feels like a good fish is what it feels like. Oh, <laughs> this is freaking awesome, man. It does not get any better than this. This fishing, oh, man, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Um, you guys can take the guesswork out of all of this and just book a guide trip with three pound fishing yours truly right here uh, book a, a guide trip we do half days full days we have a good time on the, the water folks I always recommend the full day because you get the full experience um, four hours it just goes by really quick if you do a half day but big fish All right, this episode is about electronics, folks. So let's talk about electronics, okay? We're gonna talk about three important things. And number one is side imaging. Now let's check out this side imaging from Hummingbird. This is my 10 inch generation three. Most important thing I wanna let everybody know is that there is a big difference between a generation two and a generation one. But there's not a big difference between a generation two and a generation three. So this is a generation three. In my opinion, it is no better than a generation two but it still gives an incredible image. If you look at the specs on your left, that is what we're fishing right now, folks. They're not that schooled up, but they're scattered. That's why I don't need to throw a buoy. That was my whole point of that. I wish I would have said something, but I know that they're all around in there and I'm just dragging a curly fry back to me and hoping to, to get one, see if we got some aggressive ones out here. And obviously we do, so enjoy it. This is just my side imaging portion of this, and we're gonna actually talk about side imaging a little bit more later in the video. Sleep at night, I'm thinking of it. Wow, another dandy. 
another dandy another dandy solid 12 inch fish right there thick 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 wow Hey folks, if you notice here, I'm changing out to another 10 footer. I've got currently four gray rods, pro series rods sitting on the deck and three of them have different style baits on them. So I can quickly make a change just like I'm doing right here. One has a blade on it, one has a curly tail, one has a, uh, I think it's a tickle fry. And then of course, one of them actually has a float in case I'm gonna be throwing a float. So options, quick, quick options are really nice to have on your deck. First cast with the blade on this episode, I was just casting with a straight curly tail. I added the blade, first cast, fish on. Hmm, makes you want to think. Hmm. Hey, check out Ozark Rods, 10% off. Use the, the code pound, three pound as your code. You get 10% off, folks. You can't beat that. This Pro Series great. Kicks butt. All right, so let's talk more about electronics. When I stand in the back of my boat, I always have my side imaging running, folks. No joke, it's always running. And I can't keep my eyes off of it. In some circumstances, I actually like it better than the live scope. But as you see, as it peppers come through like that, I call it like shotgun blast to the side. I know that a huge school is now moving through the right side of my boat. And I think that's important to know. Certainly you can see it, see it on live scope, but it's just as impactful seeing it on side imaging like you're seeing right here. Unbelievable to be in the back of the boat and know that that's going on 20, 30 feet to your left and immediately you cast over there and a lot of times you have good luck there. beautiful fish whoo I love it bite has definitely slowed up as the Sun has come up I'll tell you you can still catch them you just can't get them on tag they hit it so hard boom right there beautiful fish man that's a good-looking fish love it folks I love it I love it I love it that bam good fish ah gosh dang it come on now
folks. Good night. Bam! Alright, so we're talking about electronics, and of course we have to talk about my favorite subject, which is live scope. Folks, what you're seeing me doing right now is I'm basically just chasing schools around the cove. And uh, this is the live scope image that I was kind of going after. Um, I can tell you that they're kind of scattered, but you'll see them come in and out of the picture. Bam, there they are. There's the school. I'll cast towards it. Let the, let the, uh, the bait just kind of sink a little bit, then just draw it right back to me. Big thing about live scope is maximizing your screen, taking everything off of auto. That means that it's not auto front forward. It's not auto depth. Um, you're setting those to a certain depth. I'm using 18 right here. I could probably even scan it up basically to 12, but I left it on 18 because I was moving around the cove. When I'm doing a search for a school of fish, you'll look how forward I am. I'm at 50 feet, folks, 50 feet. I'm looking out there and I'm finding those marks and I'm casting to them. So if I saw a big, you know, plume or plum of tree of a uh, of fish, I'll cast right towards it in whatever direction my trolling motor is pointing. So live scope, fantastic technology. You can get away with just side imaging in my opinion, but live scope is still just, just changes the, the game just a ton and makes it just that much more interesting and fun. is a great fish hey thanks for joining me today folks winter fishing don't get much better let me tell you beautiful 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 thing wow please subscribe